This is my homemade sawmill, and a few years ago I did a video on this running it, and people had a lot of questions on how this uh, sawmill was built. Uh, we built it from scratch, my son and I did, and it's got a few components that we bought, but basically we just kind of cobbled together a bunch of stuff, and uh, I'll link the video where I'm actually using it if you want to see it work, but it's on, a, on some tracks here that are 20 feet long, and the tracks are... Looks like it's 3 8 steel and it's uh, 3 inches by by 3 inch, 20 feet long. Uh, let me pull the cover off and get you in here close where you can kind of see where it's it, how it's made up. I put the gas tank up on top. You've got uh, the two screws that go down the side to adjust the height. They're tied together uh, with a chain so that as you adjust one side. Uh, both of them move together. Now, when I'm using this thing, I have an electric drill that I hook up right here. And that's what this does. It holds it in place. And so I can run this up and down with an electric drill. So when you're at the end of your cut and you want to go up, you know, a foot and a half or something, you can raise that without much effort. And then over here, I've got a little wheel that I've got a separate video on how I made that. But I've got a little wheel that I can do fine adjustments to get it, you know, within that eighth of an inch that I need to make the cut. All right, let me get you in here a little bit closer. All right, so this is the shroud. It's gotten beat, beat up a little bit. That's mainly from uh, animals getting in here, like you know, donkeys and goats and stuff getting in here and beating this thing up a little bit. This is just to keep us from getting cut by the blade. In case you're interested in this, it's just sheet metal. And then I've got these legs that are bolted in there and they slide into these grooves that are each side welded on there. This is a Wisconsin engine that you would find like in the back of a, a Bobcat skid loader or something like that. Four cylinder. Uh, it does a great job. It's got a lot of power for this. It'll power through you know whatever I need it to. This is a clutch right here so you engage it and disengage the drive. Runs with a chain over to this side. I'll come in closer here in just a second. I bought these wheels. Uh, they came with a, it's basically just a V-belt on there as grip running in these bearings. This side, this is a fixed side. This side is adjustable in and out. And then you've got, I've got a bolt here that I can uh, tighten it up. I'll show you that here in just a second. All right, so right here, you can see this is the adjustment, and it's just a piece of pipe welded in here, a piece of tubing welded in here. It's got a bolt, weld, a nut welded on this side, and you just adjust this bolt in and out, and it pushes on this, which pushes this side out. And that's my tensioning system. This side over here, you can see, so here's the, here's the pulley. Then up underneath there, you've got the the two bearings, one on each side, and it tracks over to that side over there. Now the frame is mostly made up of this square tubing, and it is two inches by two inches. Now these are the blade guys, and they haven't been running a while, so they're kind of rusty, but uh, these are just bearings that are running on here, so the blade comes under here, like this, rests on that. The back of the blade runs against this. I originally just had a bearing back here, and I found that the blade, the pressure of the blade was pushing in and, and cutting into the bearing. So uh, this is actually a piece of pipe that I cut uh, a thickness, just, you know, a little half inch piece or three eighths inch piece of pipe and put the bearing inside of it. So this protects the bearing from, from the, the blade. And you can see it's actually just worn into that too. I need to probably take some of these, make some, uh, get, get this replace this little piece of pipe and harden it so that it will uh, wear a little bit better. <clears throat> but this keeps it from, you know, riding up and this keeps it from pushing back. You can see right here, I've just got some shims in the back of it and that's how I level it because you want your blade to be parallel to your cut because if it's tipped up a little bit, it'll it will tend to wave because it'll ride up until the tension gets it and then it'll turn down and so it'll just it'll wave back and forth. So you need to get this 
so that it is straight up and down or parallel to your cut actually. Okay, and then over here is the other side. And this one is exactly the same way. It's just uh, adjustable. You can see I've got another shim up here where I had to level this one out. And then if you follow this over, this is the side where I can actually adjust it. So I can, let me knock this loose. And then you can slide this guide in and out. So like, you know, on a any bandsaw, you want it to be as as narrow as you can so your blade is pretty much in the cut and there's not a lot of it free out on the side just to give you a better more accurate cut these are the wheels that it rides on and they've just they've got a bearing on the inside of them these are steel or cast iron they're probably cast iron with this v groove in there and unfortunately you know i'm not going to be able to give you part numbers i built this thing years ago i'll look if i can find the, any kind of part numbers where i ordered stuff and i find the emails or something i'll give you that information but um I, I don't think I'm going to have it. So these are, let's see, these are, they appear to be four inches in diameter. And that's what rides on this. And you can just, sit, you can see that I took, this was some um, two and a half inch square tubing and just took another little piece here, put the wheel in there and a little straight bar coming out to uh, to hold that. Now this is actually, it's got a little zerk fitting right there and that's how you grease that wheel. All right, so then to move the uh, saw up and down, I've got, this is the bearing that sits down here and then I've got a three quarter inch, I think that's what that is. Yeah, it's a three quarter inch Acme thread and they just run up and so right here, this is the this is the piece that attaches to the saw, and then of course you've got this piece that right that holds it up. This piece attaches to the saw and is movable and will go up and down. And then right here I have bolted. This is a piece of pipe with a nut welded to each end. That would be an Acme nut. And then in the middle of it I have a zerk fitting. So what I do is I fill this when I get ready to use it. Well, first of all, see all this rust on here? I have to clean this with a wire brush because it sits out here. And then I will fill this with grease and run it up and down, and that keeps it greased while I'm using it. I've got that on both sides. This is how I measure my cuts for my logs. I've just got an aluminum yardstick stuck onto that half-by-half half steel that's welded onto the sides there. you got an indicator right here. And you just set that by, you know, you run your saw down until it's, you know, say two inches off your work and then puts, you know, just stick this in place and you're calibrated. This is the throttle right here. It's just a piece of conduit that I cut and fitted so that it would activate this cable like that. And you just throw it down. That's full throttle and you use that handle to push it forward until you get down there to the end, let go, and that's the end of your cut, and you pull it back and start over again. These are the dogs that hold your log in place, and so it's got a, this is a fixed end right here, and so you drop this in there, and you set it at the height, which is, you know, the bit larger diameter, the largest edge of the diameter, set it at that, and you lock that, push your log against it, and then you set this one, here the same way then you pull this you slam this hard up and up against your log it'll it, it'll indent and then I take this spring with a chain on it and you pull it tight like that so as you're as you're uh, running your your saw down and your logs vibrating this is getting tighter any any slack that it gets in it is going to get taken up as you go along and then once you get to where you're turning a square, you know, when you've gotten your round part, your slab's taken off, and you're using a square, you can take these out. And you've got these dogs that are nice and low right here. And with this dog in place, I can cut down to an uh, inch and a half. So the smallest I can cut on that last piece is an inch and a half. Well, I hope that answers some of the questions that some people had about the specifics of how it was built. Uh, I wish I had taken better notes when I built it years ago, but 
you know, back then there wasn't any YouTube or anything, so there wasn't really any way to um, to uh, share a lot of this kind of stuff. So I didn't didn't take those notes. I'll see if I can find some of the stuff. If I do, I'll put it in the description uh, for you. But you know, when I uh, when I put that video out about using this, and it'll be linked in the description too, I had some people comment that my mill turns the wrong direction. So what it does is the blade comes along like this, and it cuts. And it throws the saw the sawdust out that way, which is that's I wanted to blow it away from the barn. But they said that you know what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to push the blade through rather than I should have driven this wheel so that I'm pulling the blade through. And there may be benefits to that, but what I would say is I've never had any trouble. So I don't know if that is a real thing or some of the, one of those things that people just you know argue about or what. But um, if that's a hindrance to you, I would tell you don't worry about it because I, I had no idea that that was a thing and I built this and I've been using it for years and years and I've never had a problem. Anyway, hope this was interesting to you. Thank you for watching.